name is Megan Bentley, Event and Administrative Manager for the Elizabeth Dole Foundation. We are excited that you are able to join us for today's webinar series, Caregiver Community Connection C3, presented by the Elizabeth Dole Foundation and powered by our partners at Wounded Warrior Project. We're also very pleased to have the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs join us as partners for this series as well. Today's C3, Maintaining Balance, Online Yoga for Caregivers, will feature Ellen McKay with Yoga for Caregivers. It is a special episode as we announce that this will be our last monthly yoga episode with yoga, yoga for Caregivers. Before we get started, I want to mention to all attendees that this session is recorded and will be available in the Guides tab on HACC or on our website. With all that said, we will take questions towards the end. Today's moderator, Marianne Delatoire, will be hanging out in the chat box. Be sure to submit any questions you have using the Q&A box located in the Zoom control panel. We'll be taking note of all your questions to get them answered live during our Q&A. Today, we'll be selecting several winners from our webinar participants during the episode. To enter into drawing, engage with us in the chat. Today's winners will receive a free Hidden Heroes yoga mat or an Amazon gift card. Today's C3 features closed captioning. If you would like to disable it, go to the live transcript button in the Zoom control panel and click disable auto transcription. It can be disabled at any point during the webinar. Now, without further ado, please join me in welcoming Ellen as we get started. Ellen, take it away. Hello, Megan. Thank you so much for having us today. We are always grateful to be here. Um, I'm going to be practicing mostly in a chair. I'll do a little bit of standing practice, um, but if you prefer to stay in a chair throughout class today, I will definitely give you options. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So if you're in a chair, go ahead and scoot back a little bit, lean back, kind of get nice and comfy. If you're seated on your yoga mat or maybe you're lying down, that's fine too. Just get nice and comfortable. We're going to start with some relaxing breath. And just kind of bringing our awareness into the body, into this moment. Let's take a nice big breath in through the nose, kind of fill up those lungs and exhale. Let it out. Let's do that a couple more times. Inhale, breathe it in and exhale, let it go. Good. Let's do that one more time. Bring it in and exhale, let it go. Very nice. Eyes can close if you choose. And let's bring our attention to the breath. So just kind of notice where the breath is moving in the body. Maybe you're breathing in and out through the nose. Maybe you're breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Whatever combination you're using today, just begin to be aware. Maybe start to notice what areas of the body are moving as you breathe. So maybe it's the chest, maybe it's the belly, maybe if you're lying down or the back is against a chair, maybe you can even feel your back kind of pressing into those spaces as you breathe. Good. And if you choose to, you can even begin to expand that breath. So maybe taking those inhales in a little bit deeper, filling up chest, maybe even feeling that breath fill up all the way down to the belly and then exhale, let it all the way out. And as you start to find your rhythm for your breath today, maybe take a few more rounds, just kind of Noticing that in rhythm, that inhale and exhale, maybe those are the same length. So maybe your inhale is maybe a three or a four and your exhale is the same length. Maybe it's a little different. All of that is okay. Just finding your pace today. Good. Keeping up with that pace. Let's bring our awareness now to the body. So if you have the eyes closed, sometimes that can help Kind of bring that focus inward, but if you prefer to keep the eyes open, maybe just find one spot either on the wall or on the floor, something that you can just kind of gaze at without really being distracted. So we're taking that awareness inside the body. Notice maybe the muscles in the face. See if you can soften a bit around the eyes, the jaw. Maybe you feel your neck relax and your shoulders soften a little. 
Maybe the palms and hands also relax. Just letting them lay gently open. Chest and belly and back relax here. And notice if maybe you need to shift or move a little bit to feel that much more comfortable to help those muscles and to help the body just kind of settle in where you are. That awareness moves down through the hips, legs, all the way down to the feet. Bringing the awareness down to the soles of the feet, especially if the soles of the feet are touching something like the floor. Notice the texture, the temperature that's touching the soles of the feet. Taking a breath or two here, finding that grounding moment. Good, three more rounds of breath wherever you are. Good. And with the eyes are closed, slowly begin to blink the eyes open. And if you're lying down, go ahead and find your way to a seated position, whether it's seated on the mat or seated on a chair. And if you're seated on a chair, see if you can lift up a little bit from the back of the seat. So it might even feel better to kind of scoot a little bit more forward so you have some space between your back and the back of the chair. Let's start with just some gentle movement. So shoulders can roll, maybe you circle your wrists, just kind of get a little movement in the body. Whatever the body feels like doing, maybe you reach up, maybe you reach to side, just kind of get a little bit of that reach and movement and stretching, checking in with how the body's feeling today. And then we'll come back to meet in the center. Taking a look straight ahead, and we'll gently turn the head slowly side to side. So no need to go really fast or to go really far. We're just kind of working into the neck here, maybe the tops of the shoulders, gently beginning that stretching movement. Good, let's go one more time side to side, nice and slow. Breath stays steady and bring it back to center. Now we're gonna take ear to shoulder, slowly come back up and then ear to other shoulder and come back up. Good, we'll do that a few more times side to side. Noticing again, breath. Gentle breath in and out. Good, one more time side to side. And center and to the left and center. Good. I'll add a little bit more, take the chin down towards the chest and we'll slowly move head to side to side. Maybe feeling a bit more stretch now in through neck and shoulder space. One more time, side to side. Next time the head moves to the right, we'll take a pause there. So right ear towards the right shoulder, left shoulder is softening away from the left ear. Maybe you take the hand down towards the chair. You can reach it down towards the floor and breathe into that space. Good. Two more to go. And bring the head back to center and to the other side. So now we're going to the left. Same thing on this side. Let that left ear drop down towards the left shoulder. Right shoulder can drop down. Right hand can come to the chair. Maybe it reaches down towards the floor. And breathe. Keep it going. A few more rounds. Great, slowly bring the hand back to the lap, head comes to center, inhale, rise all the way up. Now we'll roll the shoulders up and back a few times. 
Get that nice squeeze up, take it back, bring it down and roll it forward one more time. This direction, good. Bring it back to that center and we're gonna go the other direction. So up, forward, down and back. Good, a couple more rounds here. Again. And last time. And then bring it back to center. Great, so I know that this month is um, Brain Injury Awareness Month and yoga has a lot of great things that we can use to help work with that situation. And one of the main things is taking your um, body and bringing it across the center line. So we're gonna do a few exercises where we take the left side and work it to the right and the right side to the left. So take your time, go nice and slow. We're gonna repeat these so you have some time to kind of let the brain figure out what it is you're trying to tell it to do. And um, we'll just get started nice and slow. So take that left arm out in front of you, fingertips facing forward. And then you're gonna take your arm out to the left side, palm faces forward. Good, and then we're gonna take it across the center line, so across the body, and then the palm is faces back. You might even wanna tap your shoulder, that right shoulder if you want. So we're gonna do that a couple more times, just kind of getting that movement side to side. So taking it across the midline, very good. Let's do that one more time, all the way across. Good, and then bring that hand down. Let's do the same on the other side. So right hand reaches out in front, and then we're gonna swing it out to the right, palm faces forward. Then we're gonna cross it over the midline, so over that center line of the body, and maybe tap that left shoulder. So take it out. You can inhale as you take it out, exhale as you cross it over. Good, let's do it a couple more times. Inhale, take it out. And cross it over. Good, one more time, take it out and cross it over and release it down. So now let's change it up a little bit on this left side. This time the left hand is gonna cross over toward that right leg and turn your thumb down. So we're kind of turning that shoulder inward a little bit. Then we're gonna reach out and up and turn the thumb up. So you can choose how high you take that arm. Maybe it's down here, maybe it's way up here. Anywhere here that feels good for that shoulder. And we'll do that a few more times. So take that palm across the body, thumb points down and then take that arm across the body, thumb points up. So let's do that two more times. Take it down, thumb down, and then thumb up. Last time, thumb down, and thumb up. Great, arm down. Let's try the other side. So right arm out. Turn that thumb down towards the left thigh, left knee, and then we're gonna take it across the body, turn the thumb up. Yep, you get to choose how far, how high you take that arm, so we're warming up the shoulder. Good, getting that left brain, right brain to communicate with each other as we cross that arm over the center line. Good, let's do it a couple more times. Out and down and again, out and down. Good, hands come back to the legs, roll the shoulders up and back. Let's get a little shake here. Maybe shake out those wrists, shake the arms, kind of help the body reset for a moment. And then we're gonna combine those together. So take the left arm out in front and we're gonna take it to the side, cross it over. Now we're gonna take thumb up and then thumb down, okay? So take it out wide to the shoulder, thumb up and thumb down. Let's do two more times on this side. Take it out, cross it over, Thumb up, thumb down. One more time. Take it out, cross it over. Thumb up, thumb down. Nice. All right, let's try the other side. Onto that right side. Take it out, cross it over. Thumb up, thumb down. Take it out, cross it over. Thumb up. Thumb down, couple more. Take it out, cross it over. Thumb up, thumb down. Last time, take it out, cross it over. Thumb up, thumb down, nice. All right, again, roll the shoulders out, up and back a couple times, give yourself a little shake. Nice big breath in and let it out. 
Good, let's do that again. Big breath in and let it out. <sighs> Wonderful. Let's take the feet out in front and we're just gonna circle one ankle. Doesn't matter which one we're gonna do both. So circle one direction and then the other, maybe bend the toes, wiggle the toes a little bit. Good, switch it out, other foot, circle ankle. One direction and then the other. Bend and wiggle those toes. Get some movement in that lower body. Great, bring the feet back down. So if you're seated on the mat, um, go ahead and bring the legs out straight in front of you. You can even lay on the back if that feels more comfortable. If you're seated in a chair, just like me, we're gonna follow along. So take the hands underneath that left leg and bring that left knee towards the chest. So give yourself a nice little stretch here, stretching through hamstring, maybe getting a good little stretch through the hip, lift up nice and tall. Maybe we circle that ankle again. Good, switch it out. Right knee towards the chest, give it a good squeeze, circle the ankle if you choose, tall spine. Good, and switch again. So we're gonna bring left leg in. And if you choose, maybe we add a little balance here so that left hand's gonna hold onto the leg, right hand can reach up, nice tall spine. Keep that belly hugging in, starting to turn on that core. And release, switch sides, right leg in. Stay right here if you want, or reach that left arm up nice and tall. Don't forget to breathe. One more breath and release it down. Very nice. Let's take the feet wide, whether you're seated on the mat or in a chair, and we're just gonna rock the knees side to side. You can even lean back a little bit if you want, lean against the chair or take the hands behind you if you're seated on a mat and just kind of find that rock opening up hips inner thighs, outer thighs. Good. Very nice. Bring the feet back to the hips. So if you're seated on the mat and you'd like to come to stand, you can. We're going to do a bit of uh, a few chair sun salutations. So you can do the same movements that I'm doing standing, but I'm just going to do them seated. On the inhale, reach those arms out and up, get nice and tall through the spine. Exhale, we're gonna bring the hands down to the hips or the thighs and slowly fold forward. Inhale, come up about halfway, feel that belly hug up and lift up towards the spine, nice long spine, crown of the head forward. Exhale, fold it down again, maybe hands come to thighs or shins. Good, reach those arms out and up, use the belly, press into the heels, rise all the way up, nice tall spine, inhale. Exhale, hands in prayer. Good, let's try that one more time. Inhale, reach those arms out and up. Good, exhale, fold it down, hands to hips or thighs, fold it forward, find that nice stretch. Inhale, halfway up, long spine, top of the head reaching forward. Exhale, fold again, hands to hips, thighs or legs. And then use that strong core, feet pressed down, arms can reach out and up, lifting all the way up, nice and tall. Exhale, hands in prayer. Very nice, let's add a little bit more. Inhale, reach those arms out and up. Exhale, hands to the hips or the thighs, fold it down. Inhale, halfway rise. Exhale, fold again. And if you'd like, we're gonna add a little twist. Keep that left hand down to maybe either shin or thigh, right arm can reach out and maybe even up if that feels okay for the spine and neck, take it down. Let's try the other side. So right hand is down, left hand lifts. Exhale, bring it down. Good, rise all the way up. Nice and tall, very good. Hands in prayer. Good, let's try that two more times. Reach it up. And you can connect breath and movement together if it feels okay, fold it down or just move at your own pace. It's really about whatever feels good for you. Good, fold it down. Now we'll add that twist if you choose. Right arm lifts and bring it down. Left arm lifts and bring it down, good. Strong lower body as you rise up. Good, and hands in prayer. One more time, inhale. Exhale, fold it down. Halfway up and fold. Twist to the right and down. Twist to the left and down. Good, 
strong lower body as that upper body rises and hands together in prayer. Very nice. Give it a little shake. I'm going to come to stand now. If you'd like to join me, you can. If you prefer to stay in your chair, you're more than welcome to. I'll always give you options. I'm going to have my chair nearby. So we'll use it a little bit for balance if you'd like. Good. So just take a couple breaths standing, kind of roll the shoulders up and back. Maybe sway a little side to side, get some movement in that outer hip space. Good. Wherever you are, feel the feet connect to the floor. So find maybe a hip distance or a little bit wider stance. So you feel nice and steady. Feel the heels press down, the top of the head lifting up. Maybe those palms face forward. Breathe it in and let it out. Two more breaths here in our Tadasana or our mountain pose. Just staying strong, feeling all that strength in the body. Good. One more nice breath here. Inhale. And exhale. Great. So this is a really great exercise to kind of get your brain working, no matter who you are. Okay, you're going to bring your hands forward. I'm going to go really slow. And what you want to do is take one arm up, one arm down, and then they'll eventually come back together to me. So take a look, arms out in front, one arm up, one arm down. You're going to wind them around opposite directions and they come to meet. So let's do that again. Uh, one down, one up, opposite directions and come back to meet. So this will take a few times to figure out. One side is going to be different than the other. And just know that I've practiced this a lot. So my brain is like, oh, this is okay. This is what we're doing. But when I first started, I would get to about here and then my brain couldn't quite figure out what to do next. So it took several tries to figure out, oh, okay, this is how we're gonna move today. One more time in this direction. Good. And then release it, shake it out. All right, let's try the other side. So again, hands out. Now we're gonna take other arm up. So right arm up this time, if you were following with me, right arm up, left arm down. This, one, this, arm is, this side is harder for me. And then wrap it around, good. Up and down and around, good. Maybe it doesn't even work today. Maybe we're just kind of moving our arms and that's okay. But this is such a great thing to practice. Good. Let's do it two more times. One up, one down. Bring them around and back together to me. Last time, up and down. Wrap them around and bring them to me. Good. Shake it out. Maybe circle one ankle, switch sides, use that chair for some balance. And let's get ready to move again. So we're going to work on some more balance. Great way to keep that mind active, to keep the mind present as well. It's kind of hard to think about other things as you are trying to balance on one foot. So we're going to move into tree pose. Take the weight over to the right foot and feel free to use your chair or wall, whatever you've got nearby. Left toes touch, knee turns out. So if you're seated in a chair, you can feel that right foot connect down to the floor visualize that right foot connecting down to the earth wherever you are left knee can be turned out slightly and there's lots of different options here you can keep the foot down the floor the heel near the ankle maybe it comes up towards the calf you can even take that foot up to the inner thigh it's really up to you i'm going to stay about right here on my calf use that chair or wall as you choose hands can even come out if you want to challenge your balance a little bit they can even rise up towards the sky so you choose where to go Remember that breath, breathe it in and out. Good, one more breath here on this side. Wonderful, release. Give it a little shake before we move on to the other side and then onto that left foot. Right knee turns out, maybe that heel connects to the ankle. Strong through that left foot. So whether that foot is connecting to the ground or not, just visualize that connection down, that kind of rooting down, just like a tree. And when you're ready, find that shape, 
maybe change that arm shape if you choose. One side will usually be different than the other, especially with our balance. Try to keep that breath moving. One more breath. Nice release. Give it all a good shake. We're going to go back into crossing over the midline here. So take that arm, the arms out towards the sides. Take the right arm on top. Give yourself a nice big hug. And maybe move around a little bit here. Give a stretch in through the back if that feels nice. And then take the arms out wide again. Left arm on top. Again, maybe a little stretch. Good. Take those arms out, right arm on top. And this big hug is great. Stay here if it feels good. If you want to change it up a little bit and those elbows can stay somewhat stacked, we're going to take maybe hook the fingers together, thumb and pointer finger. Or you can even try to bring those palms towards each other in this eagle arm shape. So any variation is great. Just find the one that feels right for your shoulders, for your arms, for your back. We'll hold it for one more breath. And exhale, release. Good, give them a little flap. And we'll try the other side. So now left arm on top, big hug. Again, same options here. Stay with that big hug if it feels really good. If you want to, maybe those elbows stay stacked and you try to hook the fingers. Maybe even palms come towards each other. Whatever shape you choose, stay there for about three more breaths. In and out. Good, two more. Nice, and release. All right, let's add on if you choose. So we're gonna take that right arm on top again, and we're gonna take the weight to the right foot. Left toes can touch or cross over. So lots of different options here. If you're seated, if you take that left ankle, cross over the right, you can even take the left knee and cross over the right knee. If you want to change up your arm shape, you can take it into eagle arms. Good. If you prefer to stay here nice and steady, both feet on the mat, go for it. It's all about what feels right for you, what feels beneficial for you. One more breath. And release. Nice. If you want to try those standing shapes, but you want some extra support, lean against a wall. So we'll take left arm on top. Again, any variation is fine here. Hug, hook the fingers or palms together. And this time, weight's going to come into the left foot. Right toes can cross over. Maybe right knee crosses over left. And we're using that wall to help with balance. If you want to play around a little bit, maybe lean a little forward, take less and less on the wall, you know, and always have it there to fall back on, to lean on. You can. I'll take it for two more breaths. Big breath in. And out. And out. Nice. Good. Release. Let it go. Let's take a little forward fold here. If you're in your chair, take your hands to your hips or your thighs. If you're standing, we're going to lift up nice and tall. Exhale, slowly fold. So again, for wherever you are, hands can come to thighs, knees, shins, and just let it fold. Stretching through the back, head can be heavy here. Maybe even give the head a little shake. Yes and no, if that feels okay. One more breath. And then slowly rise up, hands to thighs, strong legs and belly as you rise all the way up. Arms reach out and up. Very good. Okay, I'm gonna move the chair for the moment. Um, you can still stay seated. We're going to take a wide stance to the leg. So if you're seated, just bring the legs wide. And we're going to take one leg. I'm going to use my right leg and turn it out towards the side. So you can kind of turn your right toes a little bit away from you. Left toes can turn in. And maybe if you're seated, you can kind of reach that left leg out if you choose. I'm going to move into side angle, which is just another lateral bend or a side bend. But we're going to take this left arm and cross it over the midline. So you can choose to stay on that right hand, the right hand on to the right thigh, and just reach gently. If that doesn't quite work for the shoulder, you can reach across. You can even take the elbow down and reach. So really, wherever you choose to be, find your way there. Good. 
We're gonna breathe here for two more breaths. Keep those feet pressing down, whether you're seated, you're seated or standing. So find that connection to the earth, to the ground. Bring it back up and switch it. So right toes can turn in, left toes turn out. Bend that left knee if you choose. Right leg is working straight. Starting out with those hands wide. So this is our warrior two shape. And if you choose, we'll come into that side angle. So bring the left hand down to the thigh. Right arm can start to reach up or maybe cross it over. And if you choose, you can take that forearm down to the thigh and reach. Good, all different variations are great. Feeling that side stretch, feeling that connection to the floor as we take that side bend here. Two more breaths, nice and full. And bring it back up. Awesome. Turn those toes to face forward. So feet are parallel with each other. Seated or standing, hands come to the hips, lift up nice and tall through the top of the head. Exhale, we're gonna fold. So hands can come down to thighs, maybe down towards the knees or the shins. Take your time. Again, head can be heavy. Have a little bit of bend in those knees wherever you are. And then bring the hands back up to the thighs, slowly rise up, get nice and tall and reach out. Great. So as I had mentioned, balance is a really great way to work with the mind and strengthen the mind. You can slowly walk those feet in a little bit closer. We're gonna play a little game if you choose. So if you're seated, you can still join us in the game. You're just gonna be rocking side to side with the upper body and keeping the feet uh, solid onto the ground. So we're gonna take the arms wide, feet wider than hips into our star pose. And we're gonna play a little game of balancing star. So it's kind of like, uh, you're just gonna go until I tell you stop. And when you stop, you have to stop wherever you are. We're gonna rock side to side. So maybe the toes stay connected to the mat. So maybe you just kind of gently go from side to side. Good. Or maybe you start to lift one foot and then the other side to side. Good, keep going. And then I want you to stop. So that's where we start to challenge our balance, where we feel that little wobble, maybe the foot taps down, maybe we come back down and come back up and then go start again with that movement side to side. You can always take those arms lower if the shoulders need a break. We're gonna go side to side and stop. Good. Toe taps when you need it. Again, go. Just keep going side to side, working on that balance. Good, and stop. And go. And stop. And go. And stop. And back to center. Good. Release those shoulders. Shake it out. Let's do one more forward fold here. So legs are wide, hands to the hips, lift up tall. Exhale, fold it down. Head is heavy. Little sway here. Hands to the thighs, bend those knees, slowly rise up, nice and strong. Roll the shoulders up and back. Very good. Let's come back to seated, whether you're in a chair or coming down to the mat. Take your time. Good, shoulders roll up and back. Let's take some hot breaths in through the nose, maybe even squeeze those shoulders up. Exhale, breathe it out, let it go. Again, inhale. And exhale. And again, inhale. And exhale. Very good. We'll move into a pigeon stretch. So we're gonna take the right ankle and bring it to the left thigh. If this shape doesn't quite work for you, you can always take the right ankle and cross it in front of the left thigh. Any of those variations work. And we're gonna start just with a little bit of a rock. If you feel some discomfort in the knee here, flex your foot. It'll just give a little more support to that knee joint. Keep that rock going. Might feel a big stretch in that right outer hip, right glute area. Good. If that rocking feels good, and you wanna take a little pause, we'll rock forward and pause. 
Full breaths. Soften those shoulders. And bring it back up. And we'll switch. So now take your left ankle to your right thigh. Same variations here. Maybe you cross the ankle instead. One side will probably feel different than the other. Find that rock if you'd like. Remember, if you feel any discomfort in the knee here, flex the foot, see if that makes it feel better. If not, take that foot down towards the ankle. Couple more rocks. Good. And if you like that pause, next time that you rock forward, we'll pause and breathe. And slowly come back up and release that leg. Let's move those legs around a little bit, maybe a side to side, maybe you bounce the heels. Inhale, hands rise up. Exhale, we're gonna twist to the right. So right hand can come down by that right side, left hand can stand the left thigh or cross over, find your twist. Tall spine, wherever you are. And then unwind. Let's go to the other side, inhale, arms up. And to the left. Breathe. Good, let's do one more twist each side. Up and then to the right. And then up and to the left. And back to center. Some lateral bends or more side bends here. Take the arms out to the sides. Right hand's gonna come down to the leg or to the mat. Left arm reaches up and over. Maybe even feel that left heel or left sits bone connect down to the seat or the floor, kind of pressing in opposite directions. So left arm is reaching up and over, left foot is reaching down. Bring it back to center, other side. Right foot presses down, right arm reaches over. Breathe. Good. Two more breaths here. And back to center. Roll the shoulders up and back. We're going to repeat that our movement that we did in the beginning just to give ourselves another try. So we'll start with the left arm. We're going to go nice and slow. Take your time. Take that left arm out to the side. So palm faces forward. Yep. Bring it across, tap that right shoulder maybe. Bring the thumb up and then turn the thumb down. Let's do it again, out to the side. Tap that right shoulder, thumb up, thumb down. Two more times, out to the side. Cross it over, thumb up. Thumb down. Last time, this side. Out to the side. Cross it over. Thumb up. Thumb down. Nice. Let's do the other side. Right hand out to the side. Cross it over. Thumb up. Thumb down. Again, out to the side. Cross it over. Thumb up. Thumb down. Two more times, out to the right. Cross it over, thumb up, and thumb down. Last time, out to the side, cross it over, thumb up, thumb down. Nice, release, shake it out. Give those hands, wrists a little shake. Wonderful. Let's get nice and comfy. So if uh, you're in a chair, kind of scoot your way back, feel free to lean back, let the hands just rest comfortably on the legs, eyes can close. 
if you're seated on a mat, you can stay seated. You can also lie down, add props as you need to, maybe a pillow or a blanket, whatever makes you feel really, really relaxed. Again, you can choose to close your eyes if you'd like. Let's take a nice big breath together in through the nose and out to the mouth. Let's do that again, in through the nose. And up the mouth. Very nice. Allow the body to soften again here from the top of the head, slowly working your way down. So muscles around the eyes, jaw, cheeks, neck, shoulders, arms and hands. Chest, belly, and back. Hips, legs, all the way down to the soles of the feet. And as the body softens and relaxes here, feeling that breath again. Maybe you feel it move through the chest, belly, maybe the whole torso. Maybe you can even feel that breath moving through the whole body. So as you inhale, you might notice slight little moves and changes as you take that breath in, and as you exhale and breathe it out. Maybe you feel a little bit of expansion as you inhale, kind of taking up more space. And then exhale as you breathe out, maybe the body relaxes just a bit. Take a few more rounds here. And if it feels relaxing, you can even repeat a little mantra, which is just a repeated phrase. I am calm, I am relaxed, I am peace, whatever comes up for you today. A few more breaths here. And if the eyes are closed, slowly begin to blink them open, wiggle the fingers and toes a bit. Find a little bit of stretch, a little bit more movement. And then eventually hands can come together in prayer. Thank you all so very much for joining me today. Thank you so much, Ellen. I'm already feeling so much more relaxed. Good. So throughout the session, we did have a couple folks come in with some questions. Uh, so our first question was, does the type of chair matter in this practice? Uh, that's a really good question. So as far as a chair, as you can see, I kind of have a folding chair here. Um, pretty sturdy. I'm also on a mat, so it's not slipping and sliding around. So that's really important. Um, if you only have an office chair that has wheels, I would just be really careful, especially if you're standing and doing balancing poses against it, you might want to slide it up against the wall so it's got something to move on. Um, the sturdier the chair, the better. So if it's super, super cushy and you kind of fall into it nice and relaxing, that's great for relaxing. But if you're trying to practice from a chair, it helps to have a good solid base to practice from. Great. Thank you. We had somebody else ask, what is good music to listen to while doing yoga? Oh, well, you know, whatever music feels good to you. A lot of people play instrumental music, you know, so maybe they don't get distracted by the words, but it's really whatever brings you to the mood that you're looking for. So if you're looking to relax, listen to relaxing music. If you're looking to focus, use some 
um, music that helps you focus. If you want to energize, you need to kind of like wake up and get going. Have some music that makes you feel that way. There's not really a particular music that you have to listen to. I would, for myself, my own practice, I just kind of gauged on my, what I'm looking for, what I'm looking to get out of my practice. Good to know. Thank you. So as previously mentioned, March is Brain Injury Awareness Month and modified yoga is a common activity recommended for brain injury recovery. What are some modified exercises that are gentle and therapeutic for TBI survivors and caregivers? Great, great, great question. Um, we did, we practiced a few of those today. So anytime you can take your body and cross it, like take your limbs, arms, or legs and cross it over the center line is a really great way to get the left brain and right brain working together. Um, and going slow, super key. So just let your, you know, allow yourself to take time and not to get too frustrated with yourself. So even just simple movement side to side where you're going across that middle line. So taking it across the nose or across the belly button, anything like that, whether you're seated, standing, lying down, that's always really, really helpful. Um, we also had another little um, mind challenge when we tried this one, the up and down and around. <laughs> so I don't know if you tried that one, but one side was definitely easier for me than the other. Um, and again, that takes lots of practice. I've done it several, several times. So it's a little bit easier for me and my brain to just like, oh, okay, that's what we're doing. But the first 10 times at least, my brain still was like, I don't really know why you're asking me to do this, but I'm doing my best. Um, but you know, whatever you practice slower is better. Be patient with yourself. Try not to get frustrated. Take those. If you start to feel that kind of frustration coming or anxiety coming, pause, big breath, let it go and begin again. Thank you. So staying in line with brain questions, someone else has asked, does the thumb up, thumb down method have an effect on the brain as well? Not particularly. It's just another thing to get you to try something new. So we're adding on to the bigger movements. We're going side to side, then we're going up and down. And just to make the brain work even harder, we're going to add some internal rotation and external rotation. So it's just kind of more things to make your brain do while you're moving. Great, thank you. Uh, so we had somebody else ask, um, are there any kinds of diets that are more in line with the yoga practice? It's commonly said that a vegetarian diet is recommended. Is that true? That's a great question. So I'm not a nutritionist or a dietitian, um, but for myself, I just say, you know, eat the foods that fuel you. If you are, looking to be more active, you know, eat some food that really nourishes you, makes you feel balanced, gives you lots of energy. And that can be different for everybody. Maybe it's vegetarian that works for you. Maybe it's a mix. Um, it's really about yoga in general is really about listening to your body. So that's what I would encourage you to do. Thank you. So we have another question come in um, regarding TBI. So someone has asked, how can I encourage my wounded warrior with a TBI to do yoga? Mm. Well, that's a great question. Uh, doing um, practicing together is a really great way to encourage someone to get some movement in. Um, also mirroring. So kind of sitting in front of somebody and seeing if they can mirror your actions, make it more into a game, make it a little more fun. Um, I know for me, when it's time to work out, if I'm doing something that I enjoy, uh, I'm definitely more apt to do it. So if you can bring in, um, if they love music, you know, maybe you play some music they really love and it doesn't have to be particular poses or shapes. If you can just, you know, find some movement crossing over just some gentle, slow movement like that can be a great way to begin this practice. But doing it together is a really fun way to get everybody on the same page. Great, thank you. Someone else has asked, for those that are in wheelchairs, what modified exercises do you recommend? Well, a lot of the um, practice that we did today and most of our other classes, I'm seated in a chair for a lot of them. Um, everything where I'm seated in a chair is definitely accessible for anyone in a wheelchair. Um, as far as standing poses, if the legs are mobile, you can always 
take some different shapes with the leg, take them wider, take one straight, you know, move them around a little bit as gentle and um, much as it feels comfortable. But all of our upper body movement, our arm stretches, neck stretches, twisting, um, you know, our lateral stretches, all those are so great. And when we're doing our mindfulness, really visualizing that energy in the legs, routing down to the floor, you know, really anything that you can bring your awareness into that lower body and movement, if it's possible, would be great. Awesome. Thank you. So this is a question specifically about um, yoga for caregiver and like the pro the programs you might offer. So someone has asked, do you have a yoga program specifically for individuals who are disabled? Um, we don't have a particular class um, for that, but we offer the majority of our classes are accessible classes. So we have lots of chair practice. We have lots of slow and gentle practice. Um, and our classes range usually from five to 30 minutes. We have a couple 60 minutes in there. Uh, a lot of our teachers are trauma-informed or have been practicing for a long time, so we just automatically offer lots of options. Um, but if you join our group and you have particular needs or particular questions, please reach out and let us know, and that way we can add those options into our classes. Thank you. So mentioning of the resources you all have to offer, someone has asked, uh, said that they are a veteran and a yoga instructor. Do you have any specific resources to use for veteran survivors? Um, that's a great, great question too. So right now, actually the probably half of our teaching volunteer staff are veterans. Um, and we are hoping to create some more um, learning tools education tools for yoga teachers that are also veterans. Um, and those are all to come. But right now, you know, as far as joining the group and participating in our mindfulness moments, those are always really great ways to learn some resilience tools, some relaxation tools, anything like that. Thank you. We have another couple questions come in. Someone else has asked, what is the What's the best way to handle when muscle cramping happens? So for example, in the back or the stomach? Okay, um, if it's happening during a practice, I would just pause whatever you're doing and maybe take things a little more gently, take some breaths. Um, sometimes self-massage can help, you know, so if you've got a calf, a cramp or something or a back, you know, like maybe something a little bit in the back, just give it a little bit of a rub if that feels nice. Um, from there on out, I would say just taking things a little bit more gently that, that during that practice, drinking water is always great, keeping yourself hydrated, um, but just be kind to yourself. Thank you. So mentioning of the back, someone else has asked, are there particular ways to strengthen your lower back? Sure. So when we did things like folding forward and coming halfway up, that halfway, uh, option really starts to strengthen all those muscles along the spine. Um, anything like that, you can always take your hands out in front, even a little bit of a lean forward or a lean side to side or working through that whole core. So sometimes when we say core, we think about just our abdominals in the front, but really our core kind of wraps all the way around from our back to our front, all the muscles on the sides here. So anything that you can do to strengthen all of those muscles will support those lower back muscles. So if we can strengthen our front core, our side core, if we can strengthen those back muscles, that will just help everything work better together. Thank you. Just a couple more quick questions. Uh, does doing yoga practice bring up emotions? It's different for everybody. I think anytime that we are, we take time um, out of our busy days and we find some stillness, sometimes that creates space for things to come up. Um, and I think especially in a yoga practice, if you're taking a more slow, gentle practice, maybe you're doing more breath work uh, or more meditation, that creates more space to kind of let those emotions come through. Um, obviously, if you feel like you need to talk to somebody about those kinds of emotions that are coming up, you know, reach out, find a professional. But if, if it feels okay for you to kind of just Feel the emotions, breathe through, 
you know, acknowledge that they exist, especially if you're having a challenging day, you know, be kind to yourself, take that pause. That's, it happens. It happens whenever we take time out of our busy life, when we're not doing a hundred things at once. <laughs> Sometimes those things just bubble up. Right. Thank you. So this is the last question we have for you. Uh, someone has asked, is it important to practice yoga in front of a mirror? Mm. I wouldn't say it's important to practice in front of a mirror. I think it can be useful in certain ways. If it seems distracting to you, then don't do it. <laughs> but if you feel like uh, you're not quite, you're, you're, maybe you're beginning your practice and you're not exactly sure if your shapes are what the teacher is saying or what you know, whatever video is saying, sometimes it can be helpful to see yourself and realize, okay, my right arm needs to be down more or, or whatever. So if you feel like it's a useful tool, great. If it's distracting, meh. <laughs> let it go and just, you know, listen to your body, connect it with your body. Thank you. Uh, so we did have a final question come in. Someone asked, are these classes on, what side are these classes on? I can take that one. Um, so these classes are on both of our YouTube channels. So um, Elizabeth Dole Foundation and Yoga for Caregivers and Mary Ann will drop that link here in the chat soon. Um, so Ellen, thank you so much again for taking all the time for Q&A. Um, and I'm gonna wrap us up here. So congratulations to our giveaway winners. Please email us directly at events at elizabethdolefoundation.org with a good mailing address, and we're gonna get those prizes over to you. That email will also be posted in the chat. So congratulations to Kelly Willard, Renee Foster, Lorraine Swan, and Nancy Gresham. On behalf of the Elizabeth Dole Foundation, we wanna thank Ellen and all of the Yoga for Caregivers team, Sonia and Jennifer as well, for this amazing partnership bringing yoga to our community. We will continue to support Yoga for Caregivers and encourage all of you to keep up with their great programs and services. Be on the lookout for a follow-up email from us that will include the recording of today's webinar, some Yoga for Caregiver resources and organization info, and the link to register with Hidden Heroes. Ellen and Jennifer, is there anything else you want to cover before we wrap up? For me, I just want to say thank you so much for this opportunity. It's been a real honor. We've loved working with you every single month. Um, and just thank you to all the caregivers that are joining us. Um, we appreciate you and are so grateful that you took this time out for yourself. Anything from you, Jen? No, just really to echo what you've said, we've been so grateful to spend this time with you. The last year or so has really been a pleasure. I know all, everyone on our team has been so excited and um, we look forward to continuing to serve caregivers. Thank you both. And, and likewise from our end, we've, we've loved working with you guys. I'm definitely gonna miss doing these every month. So if you're not already registered with HHCC, we encourage you to join our Facebook group for updates. Our group is an inclusive community for military and veteran caregivers of all service eras. If you care for a wounded, ill, or injured service member or veteran, we would love to welcome you into our community. Just visit hiddenheroes.org slash register to get started. Also, as a military or veteran spouse, child, parent, or friend, we know your days are packed with responsibilities. That's why we launched the Respite Relief for Military and Veteran Caregivers Program, which offers family caregivers of veterans or service members access to free short-term relief with the help of an in-home care professional. Please connect with us and take advantage of this free opportunity. And finally, thank you everyone for joining us today. And a big thanks to our partners at Wounded Warrior Project and the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs for supporting our C3 series. We hope you enjoyed today's C3. Stay in touch and have a wonderful day. Thanks everyone.